afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stamp and Chat. I am Gina from Gina K Designs, and I'm so happy to see all of you from all over the U.S. and all over the world. Today, we're going to have some fun doing a technique called rainbow image gradation. And I'll explain what that is in just a minute. But first, I wanted to uh, tell you that today over on our blog, and over on Instagram, we are participating in a blog hop and an Instagram hop with our friends from Waffle Flower Crafts. Waffle Flower came out with a brand new crafting mat and they sent me one and it's absolutely amazing. I really like it. So they asked us and a couple other companies if we would be willing to do a blog hop and an Instagram hop with them showing how we use their product. And so we did that. So if you happen to be over on our website, check out today's blog post. Waffle Flower is giving away prizes and we're giving away a $50 gift, gift card over at the blog. And then on Instagram, Waffle Flower is also giving away some prizes and we're giving a $25 gift card over there. So check it out today. Um, all of the details and when it expires are there. So if you're watching this video on replay weeks from today, uh, that contest is going to be long gone, but um, we're always doing fun things like that. So stay tuned for the next one. Okay. Well, welcome everyone. I see you guys all coming in. Looks like things are working okay over on YouTube. Tom, YouTube gave me a scare this morning. I, a scare? It did. I posted our video over on YouTube and nothing happened. It didn't show up. And then there was no picture, like no screen. And I checked, is YouTube down? And there was a big spike on down detector. And there were hundreds of people reporting that it was down. And I was thinking, oh, no, all my YouTube friends, they're not going to be able to find us. But I see you all commenting. So I'm glad you're here. All right. So let's talk about the word gradation. Gradation means kind of like it, when it comes to color, kind of moving in small increments down a line or you know through a series so um we're going to do a rainbow gradation meaning we're going to start at red we're going to move to orange yellow green blue purple and then pink so that is the rainbow order you think roy g biv and then let's see biv is violet so that would be purple and then pink comes after that which wraps back around to red so if you wanted to do a circular type of rainbow. Pink would be that in between the violet and red. So what we're going to do, instead of doing ink blending like we normally do, we normally just blend that gradation right down the card. We're going to actually use images to create the look of a rainbow. And a fun way to do that is with layering stencils, because you can do lots of ink blending on the images, and then you can cut them out and kind of create that grade gradation, the look of gradation. Okay, so let's go to the overhead and I'll just show you this mat. This is the cute little mat. This is the mini one that Nina and Sunshine sent me and I just love it. It's so cute. It comes in this little bag, which is really fun. And it's really good because you can just fold it up, stick it back in the bag and it'll open back up. And this is great size for traveling. It's also great if you don't have a lot of space. They also have bigger ones if you do more mixed media or you do bigger cards. They have bigger ones. They also have their watercolor media mat. They've got all kinds of things over on their website when it comes to mats and other things too. So this is the mat I'm going to use today. And one of the reasons why this really intrigued me is because I waste a lot of cardstock doing ink blending. So what I usually do is I'll get a piece of cardstock and then I'll do ink blending on my stuff so I can go outside of the card and not ruin my table or my mat here. And then I end up throwing that cardstock away. So having a mat like this to blend on really saves a lot of cardstock. And I guess it saves, you know, landfill and stuff too. So this is a great tool. And then you can just wash it clean. Some colors will stain on here. I've had, um, you know, other media mats made out of this material before and some colors, they will stain, but that's okay. It, you just wipe it and clean it. And if there's a little stain left behind, who cares, right? Um, that means it's well loved. So I'm going to see if my red, I'm using a different red today than I did in the project that I posted online. So we'll see if this red stains. The other red did not stain, believe it or not. That's why my mat looks so clean. So I'm going to start off Let's see here. 
Let me get this out of the way. I'm going to start off by cutting out a few butterflies because we're going to do our image gradation on three different butterflies. So I have a piece of white cardstock here and I'm gonna pop that into my Spellbinders Platinum machine. And then I'm going to put these three butterflies on here and cut them out all at once. Let's see, can I conserve some paper here? Maybe. Difference yeah. between gradation and ombre. Well, I think that at least from what I've seen with ombre, Ombre is pretty drastic as far as the colors that you blend together. For example, I don't know if you've seen ombre hair. The ombre hair, people usually start with dark hair at the top and then they end with a, a light golden brown or even a blonde at the bottom. So there's a pretty drastic blend between the two. Gradation is much smaller increments. So there's many, many different uh, little variations going through it and um also you know you wouldn't really see a rainbow ombre ombre you would see more like dark roots going down to the middle of the hair and then it just kind of fades into a blonde um but ombre is a type of gradation i guess you would say um you know i haven't really thought about it that much and i haven't really thought much about ombre in terms of cards so maybe we should do an ombre card sorry i turned around i don't know if i disappeared there for a minute okay so this is a lot of white on the screen and hopefully you'll be able to see what i'm doing here so i have the mat and then i'm going to choose what order i want my butterflies to be in so i would like this butterfly these will get much more colorful <laughs> um so I'm going to do this butterfly here, and then I'm going to do this butterfly here and this one at the top. Okay. And so what I'm basically doing is rather than ink blending on a big piece of cardstock and then cutting it out, I don't want color up on these little parts. So I'm going to do a rainbow, 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 and they're all going to blend together. Now let me show you the colors because somebody asked me about color theory. And again, I don't profess to be an art instructor or anything like that, but this is Gina K color theory, <laughs> which, uh, you know, that and five bucks, I'll get you a cup of coffee at Starbucks. Okay. So I'm going to do on the first butterfly, red, orange, and yellow. So that's going to be the first butterfly. But for my next butterfly, I'm not going to go to the next colors. I'm not going to do this, go green, blue, and purple. I'm actually going to go, so top butterfly is red, orange, and yellow. Then I'm going to pick up with yellow, green, turquoise. So yellow will go from this butterfly to this butterfly. And then I'm going to stick with turquoise for my next color, and it will go turquoise, purple, pink. So I hope that makes sense. Yeah, I know. We card makers think we know a lot about color theory. Um, <laughs> we like to pretend we do. <laughs> so a lot of folks weighing in. Ombre uh -huh. is the blending of hues of a single color. Okay. And, um, and gradation is the progression of different colors from light to dark. Thank you, Marlene. That that maybe is what I was trying to say. <laughs> so I guess that makes sense because I, I see ombre a lot in hair. And when you see ombre hair, you don't really see it going from brown to purple. You see it going from brown all the way to blonde. So it's all the same color, right? It's just going dark brown, medium brown, lighter brown, blondish brown, <laughs> blonde, and then light blonde. And then what we're doing here is we're completely mixing colors up. All right. So let's start with this first butterfly here. Now what I'm going to do, what's nice about this mat is it is a little bit sticky. And you can see like I'm pressing around on this butterfly and it's not really moving. And I like that because I don't need to tape it down when I'm working with this. Although I will still hold my butterfly and everything in place when I'm working because um, I don't want it to shift. So... I'll probably, you know, hold it down a little bit there. And if it shifts, then, you know, it shifts. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start with, let me grab my ink stand. 
This is definitely important. I really like this. We're going to get these ink stands in our store, by the way, because I really love them. And um, one of the things I like is when you're holding something down like this, you can't really hold your ink pad and the ink pads flying all around. So I really like this thing. All right, let me find my red mini blending brush. Here she is. I'm going to make sure that she's all cleaned off because she might have a little faded brick on her. Okay, let's just do that on a paper towel here. It's the way I clean my brushes mostly. I just rub them on a textured paper towel and that gets rid of most of the ink and then you don't have cross contamination if you have you know, a brush for each color family. Okay, this is not the one I want. So this is the Fluttering Fall Layering Stencil Bundle. If you're new to Gina K Designs and you haven't seen this one yet, so we're going to start here. Let's make sure I'm there. Okay. And I'm going to ink up this blending brush. And then I'm just going to start real close to the top here, bringing some of that color down. Now, if you feel more comfortable, you definitely can tape things down to this mat. That is not a problem. In fact, I might do that anyway, just to be 100% safe, because I am going to let go. So let me get a little washi tape here. Okay, let's make sure we don't move that. I'm just going to tape it there and tape it there. Okay. So now I've got my red there. I'm going to keep this ink stand out because I'm going to use it again. And then I'm going to put my orange in here. This is Tangerine Twist. The first color was red velvet. On my sample card that I made for the hop, I used red hot. And now I'm going to bring in some Tangerine Twist. You can see how nicely these colors are blending together. We have a smoothing agent in our ink that smooths everything out for you too. So I'm gonna put a little more red on there and get that a little darker. So once this all dries, you won't see any lines of demarcation at all. Is that red velvet? This is red velvet at the top and then it's going into tangerine twist. Isn't that pretty? I love that real vibrant color right there on the side of the wings. Okay. So now the next color we're going to do is, I can put this red velvet away now because I'm done with the red up there. So now I'm going to use Wild Dandelion. It's great to see all you guys coming in. Happy Wednesday. Okay, so now I'm going to grab some Wild Dandelion on my brush and I'm going to work that up from the bottom into that orange. And you can see how smooth that is already. You can go back with the orange and you can blend that back down into the yellow a little bit to really smooth it out, but that is a pretty smooth blend. So let's go a little closer so you guys can see that a little better. All right, and then I'm going to pick that up and you can see how pretty that butterfly is just like that. Now, in my sample card, I did the wings, the details on the wings. For this card, I'm not going to do the details on the wings so that you can see a little bit more of the color blend. And I'll show you the other card that I made earlier. And you can tell me which one you like better. You might like the details better, or you might choose to do it this way. Okay, so let's see if that cleans up okay. <laughs> we'll just give it a shot here. I'm going to use my tidy tail. Oh, look at that. Perfect. So red hot and red velvet both clean up off of there. I always worry about the reds. The reds are the stainy ones. And then I'm going to just clean my stencil here to get rid of this. And if your stencils stain, a little bit of Gina K Design stamp cleaner will clean it right off. I love that. I don't know if you guys knew that, but. Okay, so now we're gonna go to, make sure this is dry. We're gonna go to the next butterfly in line and that is this guy right here. Okay. There we go. 
Now you could tape the wings on the top with a little bit of light washi tape if you want to. It's a little risky, but if you take some of the tape and you just put it on your sweater or something, that really kind of dulls it up a little bit. And that's only if you're worried about it shifting. So I'm not that worried about it. I'm going to take a chance. So now the next color combination we're going to do is, maybe I will because I just shifted it a little bit. The next color combination that we're going to do is going to start with that same yellow. Okay. Sorry, I have to get my head in the way here because I have to see over it. It's a little hard. The way the light comes in from the side, it gives me a blind spot and uh, I can't always see if I'm in the right spot. Okay. Alrighty. So now we're going to start with that yellow. I am going to clean my brush just in case I got any orange on there. I want it to be true yellow. And I'm going to go back in with my wild dandelion. And I'm going to start that at the top, nice and heavy with the wild dandelion. I want that to be really bright, vibrant. Now, if you don't have wild dandelion, a good substitute would be sweet corn. Or if you're looking for a more fall blend, you might want to use prickly pear or honey mustard as a more fall-like option. Okay, so I am also done with tangerine twists. I'm going to take this one out and put it away so I don't have too much open on my desktop here. I have three of the ink stands because I, I do three color blends a lot and it's just nice not to have to do anything all right, I'm cleaning up this brush. Here's my green brush. Now I'm going to do the jelly bean green. Okay. All right. And we're going to start light on this, kind of going in, just to get that green down there and blending it up into the yellow. But then we can go a little heavier on the sides here to really show off that green. And then I'll go back with the yellow. There's the hair. One of my hairs falling out of my curly head. And then we'll just blend that together like that. Okay. Maybe a little bit more green down here. Okay. So now we've got that blend. Now I've got brushes laying everywhere. Why don't I put things back? Do you guys do that? You have a stand right in front of you and you just lay it right on the table. It's kind of like walking your dish over to the sink when the dishwasher is right there and then you don't put it in the dishwasher. You know, we're all like that, right? Okay, so I can put yellow away now. I'm done with yellow. That's a good blend. Now I'm going to add some turquoise sea in here. Your ombre hair is brown to green? Okay. Well, maybe we're all wrong. Maybe it's the same exact thing. Maybe a gradation is an ombre. <laughs> all right, so now we're gonna use turquoise and we're going to start at the bottom because we wanna get a lot of that true turquoise. We don't wanna um, you know, get too much green in it right away. And then we'll work our way up into the green to get it a little bit more blue green. Ooh, that's pretty. Isn't that pretty? Ooh. Okay. So let's see what that one looks like when we take it off. Yes. Isn't that nice? I'll be gentle not to rip a antenna off. And there's my second one. So you can see now how these kind of are blending together to make a rainbow. Okay. So now last color was turquoise. We're going to start with turquoise this time. Let's give this mat a little wipe. Look how clean my desk area is now that I have this little mat. Thank you, Nina and Sunshine. I don't know if they're here today. I told them I was going to use their mat in the live today. And they said, I know they're very busy. Probably a lot of people getting their mats. <laughs> um, but I told them I'd be on. So if you're here, Nina or Sunshine, give me a hello. I would love to know. Tom, see if they say hi. All right. Now, I'm getting inky. Okay, final butterfly here. 
And I am going to get a new piece of washi tape because I do have a lot of ink on these and I don't want to contaminate my uh, project, which y'all know how easy that is to do, right? The fingerprint <laughs> issues. So I'm going to just put that right on my sweater there to make it less tacky. And then I'll just tape down his little antenna. And then we'll go for this one here. Nina said, we are here. Hi, Nina. Hi, sunshine. It's great to see you guys. Thanks for coming up with such a cool product. I love my small business friends really come up with the stuff to make crafting life so much easier and more fun. It's all about the fun. Okay. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to start with this turquoise again. And I want to, you know what? I'm going to tape this down and I'm going to clean my brush. I know. Did you see it jump? Yes. <laughs> Patty is requesting cards with your pattern papers. Oh, that's a good idea, Patty. I can definitely do that. Well, I got to tell you, Patty, there is something coming out in our next release that you're going to love for pattern papers. And I'm going to be doing a whole video on it for sure, because this is something that I've wanted for a long time. And, um, and you guys have been asking for part of this. So I think you're going to like it a lot. And we'll definitely use pattern papers. Okay. Thank you guys for giving me a thumbs up here on YouTube. I see a lot of you mentioning that, and uh, I really appreciate that. That really does help my channel. Okay, so I'm going to go with Turquoise C next, and that's going to start here at the top. And we're going to do that nice and vibrant. Are you I'm, linking the mat after the live? I can do that. Sure. Yeah, I can link the mat. It'll be in the description on YouTube. So if you're watching on Facebook, just head over to YouTube to get the, the link. And Nina, if you want, in, or Sunshine, go ahead and drop your link right here in the live to where this mini mat is. That would be great. That'll be helpful to a lot of people who want it. Okay, so... Um, and aren't these mini blending brushes just awesome for this? I love how much control I have being able to just do a tiny little bit like that. Gotta love these minis. All right, so I've got the first color down. Now I'm gonna move to purple. I'm gonna keep this out. Let me unload green. I don't know, anything that keeps me like less messy. I'm not going to say I don't love. Okay. Clean that up. There we go. All right. So I'm uh, I'm doing purple. This is wild lilac. The last color was turquoise sea. Of course, you can always substitute some of our other blues like blue lagoon or wild wisteria for the purple. Okay. And now we're going to go right across the middle here. A little light. And then we'll get a little heavier on the sides. And then I'm going to stop there. And then I'm going to go back with the turquoise brush. And I'm going to bring that turquoise down into there and get that, you know, that pretty blue wisteria color that it blends together to make. Oh, yeah. The band is starting. It's a lunchtime, uh, lunchtime band. <laughs> I know those of you watching over in Europe, it's not lunchtime for you, so I call it a lunchtime live, but that's just for my, uh, that's actually just for my Midwest and East Coast friends. Our, our uh, Pacific time friends are probably just getting done breakfast. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna use Passionate Pink next, and I'm gonna bring that up from the bottom because I don't wanna contaminate the color until I get to the purple, and then I'm fine with it. So we wanna get the true Passionate Pink that vibrant pink and then working my way up okay and then I'm gonna go back with the purple and blend it down into that pink okay so I think we've got it now we're gonna do a little background blending 
because why not? We've got this cool mat. We might as well do as much blending as we can. Look how pretty. Now, for those of you that are new to our layering stencils, I always recommend cutting out the butterflies first. It's a lot easier to get them centered onto your, um, your butterfly than trying to do all the stenciling and stencil the antennas in the right spot and then cutting it out. That's kind of a nightmare. So cut it out first, then it's pretty easy to see around the outside. Oh no, your butterflies disappeared from your table. I feel you, girl. <laughs> Everything disappears. All right, so let's clean this stencil up. And we'll get this out of the way. Okay. Now we are going to cut a slimline panel because I'm going to make a slimline card, a mini, mini slimline card. Cause these are, you know, these are kind of decent size images. So you can see when I line them all up like this, how they, um, they take up a lot of space and that is bigger. <laughs> they flew away, Linda, <laughs> your butterflies flew away. Um, they take up a lot of surface space on your card and it's a little too much for an A2 size. So you can, if you don't have our mini slimline dies, don't worry about it. You can always just cut the sizes that you need as well to make a mini slimline. The mini slimline dies are nice because they have that decorative stitch edge and they kind of finish it off and make it easy so you don't have to think. But it's not that hard to cut a rectangle. So you can still make this card today, even if you don't have those. So let's put these, let's get rid of these right now. I don't want anything to happen to them. I'm gonna move the mat out of the way and I'm going to grab my die cutting machine again. Okay, let's back up just a hair. So there we go, get that nosebleed section going. <laughs> oh, my whole mat moved. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the slimline rectangle, the mini slimline rectangle with the stitched edge and the plain one. Oh, Linda, you're not the only one that loses stuff. I'm telling you, I, I lose stuff while it's in my hand. I am hold, I, the other day I was looking all over for my cell phone while I was talking to Tom on the phone. So, <laughs> you know, do you do that? Okay. So I'm gonna use just a long piece of cardstock here. And I'm gonna pop this die in and I'm gonna cut that out. Ooh, happy early birthday, Kelly. Oh good, Nina, I'm glad you're not, I'm not the only one. You do that too. Okay, so you can see this, oops. This decorative little edge around the outside is so nice. That's the uh, single stitched little border around there. But if you are looking to cut this out yourself and you don't have the mini slimline dies, let's just give you a measurement here. This measures two and three quarters of an inch by five and three quarters of an inch. So you can cut your panel two and three quarters of an inch by five and three quarters of an inch. Now, the... Uh, layer die that goes in this set. That's this one that comes in the same set. This one is one eighth of an inch bigger. So if that was two and three quarters of an inch, this is two and seven eighths of an inch. The other one was five and three quarters of an inch this way. That's five and seven eighths of an inch. So we're going to cut this one out in black. I do too. I love the decorative edges. But we always want to give measurements if we can. And also, if you don't know the measurements of the dies, just head over to our website, GinaKDesigns.com. Type in Master Layouts on the Shop tab when you get into the Shop tab. And just pick whatever set you have. And all of the measurements are on the website, but they're also on the packaging. So when you get your packaging, it'll tell you what the sizes are. But if you don't have them and you want to mimic the same rectangle, go ahead and check our website for the sizes. All right, so you can see that is just a beautiful little layer there. I'm gonna put this off to the side. Okay, you know I'm bringing this back, but it's in the way right now. Okay, so now let's get the mat back. And then we're gonna put this down on the mat. And then I'm gonna do a little, um, just a little light, 
blending using our Harvest Flourish. This is the Harvest, Harvest Flourish. Let me put it here on the uh, gray so that you can see how pretty this one is. This is a great stencil for just kind of creating some texture on your card. And if you use a light gray or a very light tan, like our uh, Sandy Beach or even Craft with a light hand, or um, I'm gonna use Soft Stone today for this, you, you get a nice texture. It gives a little bit of dimension and um, it, it's really pretty. Vicki, yes, I am going to do a knockoff video. I just don't know when. I've just been really trying to get everything else in that people have been requesting and releases and things like that. So hang on. It's coming. It is definitely coming. Okay, so I'm going to place this on top. Now, this stencil is smaller than the mini slimline panel, but that's okay because I'm not going to the edge anyway. All I really want to do is create some um, texture more in the middle. So I'm going to use, like I said, I'm going to use the soft stone ink and I've got a gray brush here. I'm going to ink that up and I might just brush a little bit of that off on a paper towel here. Just a little bit just to see. Okay, that's not bad at all. Okay, so I'm going to start in the center and I'm going to work my way out. So I'm going a little heavier in the center like this, just down the center, because that's where the butterflies are going to be, mostly down the center, right? And I don't want this to go all the way out to the edge, but I want you to see it a little bit. So I'm just working my way lightly around the outside of that darker center bit that I just did. Okay. Because we still want that white edge to show. So, see that? It just gives you a little bit of something. Um, well, you definitely, if you turn it on an angle, you'll definitely get the top and the bottom, but you will miss out on the corners. So, and if you want a little bit more, you can gently place it back there. If you wanna go down just a little more, just make sure you place it in the right spot <laughs> so you don't get that double vision. There we go. You know what? I feel like I want to just leave it because I'm all right. That's not bad. I'll just do a little bit down here, a little more. Because I can't leave it alone, right? There we go. Just wanted a little bit more there. Now, I don't know if you can see that very clearly. Tom, does that look okay on the screen? Can they see that pretty well? Yes. Okay. All right, yeah, it probably pops out a little more when I get it off the mat, just because the mat is white and it, you know, it's pretty bright, so. But I love the white mat, nice and clean, really pretty. All righty, so now, let me get this put away and my ink stands put away and out of the way. So now this is going to layer, let's zoom in a bit so we're not so far out there. You know, my fast zoom. <laughs> so we're not so far out. All right. We're going to adhere these two panels together. So I'm going to use some of the Gina K adhesive for this. Oh my gosh, I was live on Hochanda TV and my tape runner ran out. I don't think anybody noticed. I was able to do a quick swap. So... <laughs> <laughs> nerve wracking. You know, like when I'm here with you guys, it's like I'm here with like all my sisters and brothers, you know, it's like you make a mistake. We all laugh together. It's not a big deal. But when you're on like network television, it's more scary. All right. So I'm going to pop this onto my card base. Now this card base, just so you know, the measurements here, if you're new to mini slimline cards, my size mini slimline, and this is the size that fits our envelopes perfectly. I don't know if I have an envelope close by. I don't think I do. I think I sent that. Oh, I do. Oh, it's way over here. Okay. Hold on. Sorry. My boob got in the way there. Okay. So this is a six and a half by six and a quarter. And then on the six and a half side, I scored it at three and a quarter. So that is um, the perfect size for our mini slimline envelopes. 
you can see that fits right in there perfectly. It's nice and snug, so it's not gonna rattle around. Perfect size for that. Okay. Alrighty, so yes, the mat is made of silicone. So it's very easy to keep clean and it helps because it's a little sticky. Um, like it just, it's not sticky, but it's, it's a non-slip surface. So it doesn't slip on your desk and your cards don't slip on top. It's also heat resistant and waterproof. So if you want to emboss on it or you are, um, you know, you're doing watercolor techniques on it where you need to dry. You don't have to worry about your heat tool damaging it at all. And also it is waterproof. So you can do all those fun water techniques that we've been doing over the last couple of videos. Um, you know, so it's pretty cool, pretty cool prod product. All righty. Okay. So now we have that and then we're going to lay our butterflies out. Now I'm going to stamp the, um, I'm going to actually, let me get my mat back. I need to put the antennas on these guys. So I'm going to find that stencil. That's this one. So you know there's all the details, right? We're not going to do details on this, though, because I have a card with the details to show you. I want to do one with no details and just get all that beautiful color. Now, one thing that I am going to do here for this is I'm going to take a very small piece of cardstock, just a tiny one. Let me find one here. I just have a tiny piece of black cardstock. I'm going to lay it on here because I won't ruin the black anyway. Unknown caller. Oh, Tom's getting a call. Um, so see how you can see through it a little bit better when you're de dealing with some of these tiny details. So just for this part, I'm going to place that on there. And the mat is going to prevent this cardstock from slipping around. And then I'll just hold it down on the wings to make sure the butterfly doesn't move. And then we're going to use some black ink. So let me get my black onyx ink pad. Let me get that loaded up into here. I don't sell the mat, but you can find it over on the Waffle Flower website. And Nina, did you post the link to that? If you want to, you certainly can. Um, but I'll, I'll put it in the description here at YouTube, too, so you can find it. Okay. All right. So I'm holding this down. We'll see if we can get, get them in because I really like this product. So I'll talk to Nina and see if we can get them in. Um, not, not to put any pressure on you, Nina, <laughs> but I know that she is wholesaling them to other stores. So she may be willing to do that with us too. Okay. So I'm using some of the black onyx here and I'm going to add the body of this butterfly. Yeah, we're getting the ink stands in too. So we'll have all the little tools for perfect ink blending. Easy ink blending. Okay. That just helped me see it better by, um, you know, putting the little piece of black cardstock behind it. Now, if this was colored cardstock, it wouldn't be a problem at all. All right, so let's clean this because we don't want to mess up any other butterflies. So we'll clean that up real quickly. Okay. And now we'll get the next butterfly. Got to always check my hands to make sure I'm not going to ruin something. Okay. Now we're going to, let's see. I always forget. I think this is the shorter one. I don't want to get this in the way either. I think this is the shorter one. Yes. The shorter antenna guy. Okay. So you can see very easily in there where you're supposed to layer it. And that, again, this is why I recommend cutting these butterflies out before you stencil on them. Because if you try to line this body up perfectly before you cut it out, you're going to end up cutting the antennas off. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and ink up the body and the antennas. I feel so confident saying antennas now because you all sent me like stuff from bug websites and stuff saying, yep, you're right, they are antennas. So I don't feel stupid anymore. <laughs> okay, look at that. Isn't that pretty? So these butterflies are, of course, they're beautiful with their insides, but they're also very beautiful when they're more plain. 
All right, we'll clean this one. Can you emboss with a heat tool on this mat? Well, I think you can, I mean, I don't know that I would, I haven't tried it, so I don't wanna answer this question. And Nina is in here watching, so she could probably answer that, or that might be a question that you'd wanna send over to Waffle Flower. But what you can do is you certainly, if you're doing watercolor techniques, you can dry your watercolor on there. So um, I know Tim Holtz, Tim makes a, a heat tool that is for, you know, those kinds of inking techniques and watercolor techniques. And I don't know that it's as hot as the one that I use, but I don't know. Um, that's a really good question. It does say heat resistant. So I'm thinking that as long as you're not just holding your heat tool in one spot for a long period of time, but I don't want to say that for sure. I'll let Nina answer that question or Sunshine can answer it. All right. So now I'm holding this one down. And um, I see some people are saying that they don't have a problem because don't, don't they use silicone mats for baking too? Maybe I'm wrong, but I think they do. And that's pretty hot. Okay. So I'm getting these antennas on there. There's a little skinny antenna. These baby uh, blending brushes are, I'm, I'm reaching for them more and more and more for these tiny details. They're really nice. Okay, there we go. Thanks, Cheryl. If, if you find out, you can let us know in the next live. Um, I'm sure we'd all want to know, or next time you see me use the mat, you can let us know what you find out. Okay. Oh, the mat is cold and heat resistant from minus 49 degrees Fahrenheit, that's really cold, to 446 degrees Fahrenheit, wow. And then you can see the Celsius, 45 degrees Celsius to 230 degrees Celsius, wow. That is, um, that sounds like you could probably emboss on it. Would that be right, Nina? Could I emboss on it? Because that sounds pretty darn hot. I mean, I, that, I cook my pizza. <laughs> not that hot <laughs> so okay so i'm gonna put them this aside here and now i'm gonna lay these out onto my card <laughs> oh it's fun oh did you order your mini blending brushes april i'm so glad you'll love them so much okay so i'm gonna lay these down like this on the front of the card And you can see they're just like, just, just make it in there, which is kind of fun. There we go. Actually, I can move this one up a little bit more. I just want to lay them out just to make sure they fit and they're where I want them to be. Yeah, that looks pretty good, right? And it's okay if like the antennas overlap just a little bit on the, <laughs> I want to say on the legs, but you guys know what I mean, right? <laughs> so isn't that pretty, that rainbow, the way that that just goes down like that? I love that. Okay, so let's add some uh, foam squares to this. So we'll pop it up and that will make this background look even more, you'll be able to see it a little better and those will cast a shadow on there. So when you're gonna do this, best thing to do is put the middle one down first, leave them other ones set up and that's how you're gonna be able to space them out really easily. So I'm using some of the Gina K Designs foam squares. I'm just gonna put two on there. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. I'm glad that you like this card. Okay. So we'll pop that right there where we know it fits. I think I could go over just a little bit to the side. Stick really fast. I don't like to really press them down until I know it's where I want it. And that's pretty close. Okay, there we go. So I got the first butterfly on there. Now I can see where the other ones are supposed to go. So I'll start down here. Oh, you guys are all so sweet. Was the gray, wait, I missed that comment. Was the gray card made with 
Tom, can you scroll that up for me with the spread on stuff for stenciling that comes out velvety? No, Lisa, the gray was made um, just using some gray ink. That's just gray ink. Yes, this is the stencil. Well, that, no, this isn't the stencil mat. This is the stencil mat right here. This is just my regular mat that I use when I work. And this mat is not anything proof. It's a disaster. I have to replace it all the time. This is just because it doesn't have any glare and it films really well. It's a good neutral color. That's why I use it in my videos. It's basically shelf liner that I got in, at Bed Bath & Beyond. And if you get any stamp cleaner on it or you get any um, alcohol ink on it or ink of any kind, it just gets trashed really fast. So... I recently put a new piece down. This is not a mat that you want to use for crafting. This is a mat that you want to use for video filming and plan on buying a lot more of it. Okay. So we'll just tuck that in there. Here we go. So there's my butterflies. You see, they're kind of nice when they're popped up like that. All right, so now we're going to add a greeting. And the greeting I want to use is this beautiful set. I think Arjita was here, and I don't know if you're still here, Arjita, but I love this stamp set by you. This is the Heartfelt Bouquet. And these sayings in here, you, you know, you can mix and match with hello and friend, but I love how these can be used by themselves, like praying for you. We will get through this. Tomorrow's a new day. I've been thinking about you. It's been too long. All of these are so wonderful. And then if you're, you know, making a big card with a big floral, you can stamp that friend on there in black or maybe emboss it in gold. But I'm just going to use one of these small ones. So you know, praying for you would be really nice or tomorrow is a new day. That's what I used in the other card. I think I'll use that again just because I know it worked out really nicely on the last card. So I have my uh, little piece of black card stuck and I'm going to use my embossing magic pad. We're going to rub some of that on there. And then let me see. Do I have my embossing Sorry, I went under the table for a minute if I sounded like I disappeared. <laughs> I do that every once in a while. I just disappear. <laughs> so here's my Gina K Designs embossing and watermark pad. My ink cube. And then I have an acrylic block here. And tomorrow is a new day. Now, if you're new to crafting, and I know I get a lot of new stampers that watch me, so I want to show you a little trick here. When you have these strip sentiments like this and you try to put them on your acrylic block, it's real easy to kind of twist them and have them not go straight. So what I recommend you doing is just putting the design down and just let it breathe into its natural state, its natural position. And then pick it up this way. This is face down. Just pick it up using the acrylic block. You can line it up against one of the grids. I don't know if you can see those grids easily on there. But that's a really good way to place your image onto your block. All right. So we're going to ink this up with some embossing and watermark ink. And I'm going to use the Gina K Designs Fine Detail White Powder for this. So let's get it nice and inky. I did use this the other day and I'm not sure if I cleaned it or not. So if I don't get a good impression, it's my fault. It's not the stamp's fault. Sometimes if you don't clean your embossing ink off, it gets a little crusty and you have to, uh, you have to redo it. You have to clean it and then redo it. Can you, can you list the colors? I do. I will list all of the colors that I used in today's, um, project over on YouTube in the description. I list everything, the stamp sets that I use, um, all of that. Okay, so I've got that on there. That's looking pretty good. Just going to get my watercolor brush. <laughs> it's a big joke around here that I bought this expensive watercolor brush and I don't know how to watercolor, so all I use it for is to just dust away excess embossing powder, but whatever. not judging. Just don't judge. <laughs> okay, there we go. It's a lot easier to clean it now than to scrape it off later with a mono sand eraser or a knife or something. Just get rid of them because once they're on there, they're on there. Okay, 
That's good. So we're going to use this. I could put, put the mat under it, but I'm scared. <laughs> I know it's probably fine. You know what? I'm going to burn myself and I put my clothespin out. All right. The wooden clothespin's the way to go. Let me just heat this tool up for a second. Okay. So we'll heat this up. Go. Looking good. Looking nice and bright. I realize sometimes part of the reason why my white looks a little bit crackly, I don't know if you ever noticed that for yourself, but sometimes I, when I blow the excess off, I actually blow some of the embossing powder off. I guess I'm really working my lungs out. So did you see this time I didn't like bring it up and go on it? <laughs> You definitely, um, you, you don't want to blow all the embossing powder off or it'll look a little crackly. Okay. Yes, this is embossing ink. It's the Gina K Designs Embossing and Watermark Ink. It comes in a cube. We also have a re-inker and it comes in a full-size ink pad. Okay. So now let's cut this out. I'm going to use one of the dies from the Master Layouts 3 die set to cut this out. I told you I'd be bringing this back one more time. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little extra taping on this today because I'm feeling like it's not gonna go well. <laughs> My premonition. <laughs> Yeah, the white fine detail embossing powder is really nice for these kinds of greetings because it doesn't swell up too much. That's the difference between fine detail and regular embossing powder. When you use regular white embossing powder, it will swell up, which is great for certain things. But for other things, it, um, you know, it blurs out the detail. So when you're doing white embossing on one of Arjita's beautiful detailed flowers, it's better to use the fine detail powder. And same for these greetings. All right, I'm going to tape that down. And I'm going to tape that down. I know, it's a lot of tape. Sometimes I just wing it. Today I'm not, not in the mood for the disaster that could ensue. Okay. All right, there we go. And remember, when you're throwing this out, don't throw your die out. I've done that too. Spent a lot of time digging through the trash. Okay, In, this can go away now for the rest of the morning, afternoon. And now we're going to add this onto the card. So I'm going to add it right here across this butterfly. Right there. And I'm just going to tape that on. So I'll just put a little tape right in the center and then I'll place it right there. Make sure it's even before I do the final press down. There we go. Okay, that looks pretty good. So there is the finished card. And once again, you can see how this fits into our mini slimline envelopes very easily. We'll get right in there. And you can find those on our website as well. So let me show you the one that I did for the blog hop. And then you guys can go over and see clearer pictures of it over there. Here's one where I did all the details for the butterflies. So I don't know which one you guys like better, but I'd love to know in the comments. So go ahead and let me know which style you like better. Um, I really like this. I think it's beautiful, but there's something about not having the detail where you really get to see the color. So it's totally what you're in the mood for. Try them both ways and see which one you like better. All right, so that is the um, rainbow gradation, rainbow image gradation technique. I hope you guys like that today. So Tom, where are you? I is here. All right. So I was thinking about giving both of these cards away today. What do you think? Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. Give, give both away. Okay. So um, let me try to get them in here because Tom and I are both on the screen. I love that. How are you, Tom? Doing great today. Yeah. Thank you. Anything new? Um, 
let's see. I've got um, got a new mouthpiece for my saxophone. Oh, we got to get you playing saxophone on here. <laughs> <laughs> you just opened up a whole. <laughs> Yeah, having fun. Whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Tom, when I met Tom, he was a saxophone player. He didn't pick guitar up until later. He how long have you been playing saxophone, Tom? Well, um when did you start? I started when I was um gosh, I must have been I must have been ten years old. Wow. Wow. Ten years old. So like twenty years. Yes. <laughs> That's right. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's give these cards away. So let's start with the plain one. So this will be the plain gradation card, this one right here, the one we made today in the show. Who does this go to, Tom? All right, that card goes to Joyce Berger, S-C-H-O-E-C-H, -E Joyce Berger, Shows. yes. Congratulations, Joyce, woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joyce wins this one. Okay, and who gets the one with the details, Tom? So this is the detail gradation card. Detail gradation card goes to Barbara A. Kingston. Hey, Barbara, Barbara. Kingston. congratulations. That's awesome. <laughs> no, Kamado, Tom would not say no to giving both cards away. Tom... Tom is very generous. He'll give all this stuff away. <laughs> oh, this was so much fun. Congratulations to our winners. For both winners, just make sure you send an email to info at ginakdesigns.com and send your name and address and whether you won the plain gradation or the detail gradation card, and I will mail that right out to you. I did mail all the cards out that were backed up on my desk yesterday. So if you were a winner over the last two weeks, um, and you still haven't received your card. It's on its way. Okay, well, that's it for today. We want to thank you guys so much for joining us. Check out waffleflowercrafts.com for their new mat. And uh, I'll be sending an email to Nina to see if we can get them in our store too. Um, in the meantime, we'll be back on Monday, right, Tom? Be back on Monday. We'll be back on Monday. So in the meantime, everybody, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you all so very much. And we'll see you again mwah, real soon. Bye-bye.